This episode was sponsored by Skillshare. Humans are the most overpowered class this game has ever seen. Even builds with a near max power stat have little chance against a fully armed human. And conversely, even builds with the highest defensive stats in the game still can't block attacks from the ridiculously OP weapons humans unlocked via crafting. The shifts in the meta reflect how overpowered they are, but what would happen if humans were nerfed? What if their intelligence stat was lowered back below the point where they gained the ability to make tools? Which builds would become the new top tiers? And which ones might actually become less viable without humans? Well, with their intelligence stat lowered, it's expected that humans would return to their playstyle as persistence hunters in the savannah. Even without advanced intelligence abilities like tool use and fire control, they would still excel at this because of their unique ability to regenerate stamina by sweating. They would also still retain their unique and powerful ability to throw things, although they could no longer craft high damage items like spears to throw. After a nerf like this, they would no longer hold the record for highest intelligence in the game. That honor would fall to the elephant, followed closely by dolphins and parrots, and then finally back to primates again. Without the ability to control fire or craft clothing, humans would be limited only to the hotter servers again, due to their lack of fur, leaving the vast majority of the game's resources freed up to be competed for once again. So which builds would dominate this new meta? There's an endless number of things to consider here. The meta right now is completely centralized on humans, to the point where even the abyssal servers are affected. The easy answer would just be to say that things would revert back to how they were before humans rose to dominance, and in some cases, it's certainly true. For example, builds which are griefed in order to acquire the rare drop Ivory wouldn't have to worry about their worst matchup anymore. But I don't think simply predicting a reversion to patch 1.3.6 would quite capture the full story. First of all, the climate has changed a lot since the Ice Age, and second, there are a lot of builds that are at a distinct advantage because of how overinflated their populations are, how plentiful their food source is, or how easily they could conquer the mostly vacant city biomes left behind by the now nomadic humans. There are also builds that have essentially been playing on easy mode because of humans, and would now have to actually change up their playstyle and learn how to play the game competitively again. A few quick examples of this. Cockroaches, while they do have many impressive resistance abilities, like radiation and toxin resistance, are actually very weak to the cold. They'd likely need to follow the humans back to warmer servers again, since the artificial heat is the only thing allowing them to persist in areas where it snows. Rats would also likely experience a drop in popularity because cities would no longer be protected from threats like snakes, and without humans to feed them, cats would also have to step up their game. Arguably the most carried builds in the game are Yoink. seabirds. While they were perfectly capable of surviving on their own due to the dominant matchup they have against fish, they've lost many of their abilities because looting garbage dumps turned out to be better XP per hour. Without humans constantly putting free loot on their plates every day, many of these bird players would be completely lost. Even if they did know how to hunt for themselves, the ratio of fish to birds is too low to support the vastly inflated player base that they have. So you'd for sure see a sharp decline in their numbers following a balance patch like this. But in my opinion, the direction that the core meta takes hinges upon how the livestock player base adapts. Of all the domesticated builds, there are only three I would predict have the best chance at rising to dominance. The first of which is the cattle. Cattle have a huge population advantage with this scenario, with an active player base of over a billion. With their astoundingly high base power stat and equally impressive HP level, there's a very real possibility that cattle will be more viable in the wild than some of the current herbivore builds like deer and elk. It's tough to imagine the current top tier predators having a good matchup against cattle. I could be horribly wrong, and cattle could get absolutely bodied once human mains are no longer protecting them. But in my opinion, the fences that they're kept in right now protect other players more than they do the cattle. Not all cattle would succeed after the balance patch. Some cattle builds are actually unable to respawn without the assistance of human players. But some, like the Texas Longhorn, don't have this issue, and would excel in the absence of humans, they could crush any players who stand in their way. The only builds I could see not having any issues competing with them would be the semi-aquatic ones, like the moose. Especially since the moose can arguably match the cattle's base stats, too. The second potential breakout class is the horse. Horses are actually already invasive in the American West, having been brought there by humans hoping to use them as a support class. They already are uncontested in the current spot, and without humans to capture and sell them, there aren't many predator builds in the area that could challenge them. Their unique ability to sleep standing up makes stealth-based offensive strategies less effective against them, so predators would need to spec into more powerful damaging moves to ever pose a real threat. The last of the domesticated builds I would bet on would be the pig. 
Pigs are extremely effective generalists that are both versatile and powerful. They have no problem returning to the wilderness, and in instances where it's happened, they devastate casual players because of their ability to dig up burrows. Feral pigs have great matchups against anything within the same weight class as them. Lynx and wolves can't really compete without risking taking serious damage in a fight. However, with humans out of the way, we have to talk about which predator builds would resurface now that humans aren't systematically annihilating them. Predators with good matchups against the pig would start to reclaim their former dominance outside of their territory from present day. Builds from the north, like the grizzly, and builds from the south, like the jaguar, would no doubt become optimal choices in the region again. Lions used to exist on every major server, so it makes sense that they'd jump at any opportunity to regain their former glory. We can't talk about a humanless meta without speculating on what would happen to the current top tier support classes, cats and dogs. Without humans to feed them, they'd need to compete with each other. And although dogs do usually beat cats in a 1v1, the cat's ability to climb would grant them an enormous advantage in the city biome. The builds which already perform well in cities would probably continue to do so, and in turn would allow cats to persist as well. However, dogs are no stranger to transitioning from their support role back to pack hunting DPS. This is what happened in the Australian server to create the build we now know as the Dingo. So although plenty of dog mains are carried by humans, the guild as a whole would have no trouble holding onto their high tier spot in the new meta. Now for some good old fashioned speculation. One of the builds I feel could absolutely dominate the city meta in the absence of humans is the Bat. Echolocation is one of the strongest abilities in the game, and it would be extremely useful for navigating the tight corridors of abandoned buildings. Carnivorous bats, such as the Cretopterus, would have an easy time picking off mice and rats in the dark, and would have plenty of places to perch out of reach. The last thing worth speculating about is whether or not any intelligence-based builds would rise up and actually start unlocking things on the tech tree. While several builds have unlocked the tool use perk, that's only one of the three needed to actually start moving up the tech tree. Control of Fire has been unlocked by certain hawks in Australia, but they can't make it themselves, they can only spread it. And Agriculture has only been unlocked by ants of all things. None have unlocked all three at once aside from humans. Aquatic intelligence builds like the octopus and dolphin probably won't ever unlock fire control. Ants probably won't either because they are too small to handle it without being in range of its heat, but I suppose it's possible. Parrots and elephants have the best shot in my opinion, as they both have the ability to pick up items, both have long lifespans, and both are herbivores that would benefit greatly from unlocking agriculture. There is also of course the possibility that one of the other simians starts to spec into bipedalism, higher intelligence, and vocal cords to simply copy the human niche. Learning new skills like this isn't easy, but if you watch my channel, I'm betting you enjoy learning things from YouTube, and so do I. That's why I love Skillshare. Skillshare is an online learning platform that features some of my favorite YouTubers talking about how to do the things that they do best, like animation, essay writing, or personal finance. These great classes, as well as over 20,000 others, can be watched for free if you use the link in the description of this video to start a two-month free trial of Skillshare. So act now for this special offer and start learning today. Thanks again for watching. And thanks especially to my patrons on Patreon. Until next time, good luck out there.